Hello, and welcome once again to another Supplier Diversity and Small Business Economic Report. Uh, now, again, just to kind of let everyone know what this, this session is and, and what I'm hoping to achieve here is essentially this is just a weekly wrap up of things that have happened uh, throughout the week uh, and how it can affect uh, businesses that are, you know, so small businesses. <laughs> Um, as well as any diverse suppliers as well. So, you know, minority-owned, women-owned, uh, veteran-owned, LGBT, disabled, et cetera. So, so things in those type of areas. Uh, the purpose of this is um, I do feel as if, you know, there is a lack of news when it comes to to uh, different issues that may affect uh, both diverse and small businesses. And I think that this is a good way to kind of handle that. So hopefully this isn't as long as the first one, but again, this is going to be covering news that's affecting, so it may not have come out during the time frame that I'm going to say, but it, it's affecting uh, the time frame between August, uh, Monday, August 6th, and uh, through Friday, August 10th. So to start out, um, I have up from uh, news.gallup.com, it's just as she talks about small business owners, optimism is at a record high. Now, we spoke last week about how optimism is is huge right now. Um, however, despite optimism being so high, uh, wages, um, as well as uh, small businesses looking to employ qualified workers, um, is still ha are still having issues with that. Um, but the reason why I wanted to talk specifically about the optimism when it comes to the Wells Fargo and Gallup Small Business Index is that this is the highest it's ever been in the past 15 years. Um, now, there's, there's a nice little chart here where it just talks about how since about uh, 2016, um, it has done nothing, but it has continued to grow um, up until right now, where the in index is at 118. Um, and that, you know, is based off of the metrics that Wells Fargo and and Gallup kind of looks at when it comes to optimism, but 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 pretty much here, just a lot of small businesses are really positive when it comes to their cash flow and credit availability. Um, as, as you can see, kind of these are two points I want to highlight there. But and again, they're one of the things that they're having issues with is finding qualified workers. Uh, so just a continuation of that, uh, but we're seeing record highs still still happening. Um, and just you know, just uh, for those who are curious, this let me see. This was taken um, uh, was taken around July 11th through July 16th. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Uh, so the interview was conducted between July 11th and July 18th uh, when it comes to that. So, but it's going to be curious as we move forward to see how you know things kind of evolve now that it, when I talked about last time, how experts are, how, are now splitting when it comes to how the economy is going to do. It's going to be very interesting to see how that moves forward as well. Now, um, in addition to that, I have another Gallup news.gallup.com um, report when it talks about small businesses on small business owners not being phased by e-commerce or technology. Now, I think that has a direct effect on the optimism. People, because we have a strong economy, people are so sure that, you know, they're going to be or that they're going to do well over the next couple of years. But they're really not taking a, a close look at, at this e-commerce and technology and where it's headed. Uh, that's why so many people are not being phased. Uh, now there's a point here um, where, it said, uh, where it talks about how um, here it is. One one reason so few business owners express concern about the impact of technology is because 63% say their company already has the technology needed to be competitive in its in its industry. Um, I I am extremely concerned about that that number, um, and I'm wondering if people are really looking at the technology that's needed. So one of the pieces that are coming that's going to come very soon here um, is things such as like energy as well as manufacturing when, when we're talking about the automotive industry. Um, the automotive industry has already made it clear to its, you know, so some of its top suppliers that they're moving in a new direction. Um, so the fact that people kind of feel that their technology that they have right now is keeping them competitive, um, I think people need to be looking at their industry a little bit closer and figuring out, you know, how it's going to evolve. Because I don't know any industry over the next couple of years that's going to stay the same. Um, in particular, when it comes to their technology, so you should always so so that the fact that sixty-three percent are, are pretty sure that they got what they need right now, I think um, they're a little blinded by their optimism. And again, this is just my opinion. Um, I think the optimism is a little bit too high 
um, for for people looking to be competitive. And I just think that for small businesses and diverse businesses, taking another look at the technology and how it could evolve over the next couple of years uh, is paramount. Um, now, there are some instances where, you know, maybe technology isn't as, as shouldn't be as, you know, in the forefront um, for whatever reason, which is fine. But again, if you're one of those 63%, just take another look um, as, as we move forward, because I do think over the next 12, 18 months that, that uh, certain things may change uh, for you. Now, small business powers forward, uh, powers the economy forward. So this is a Forbes article by William Dun Dunkelberg. I hope I said that right. I just want to kind of shoot to the very bottom um, on this because I found this pretty much interesting, which is he talks about how small business owners remain optimistic with 18 straight months of near record measures, um, according to the National Federation of Independent Businesses, um, which is a 45 year survey history. Um, I do think that, uh, again, having great optimism is, is great. And I do think that that he does make some interesting points when he talks about, hey, if you're optimistic, that means you're going to invest more and you're going to you know, spend more, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're pessimistic, you're not going to invest as much in your business and your industry. Um, I do think that that's true. However, we also have to note that there have been periods where, you know, optimism has not led to, to good things. Um, you know, for example, there's high optimism when we're talking about investing in, in technology companies in the 2000, 2001 uh, years, which did not turn out well. Obviously, the lead up to the mortgage crisis, people were pretty high on the housing market as well, not realizing it was a bubble. Now, I don't I'm not saying that this is a bubble right now. But what I am saying is that, you know, 18 straight months of near record um, owner optimism isn't necessarily an indicator that the economy will continue to to progress and, and continue to, to hit high expectations. Um, I am a little concerned about the tariff piece, just, you know, being completely honest. So I do think that people probably need to take a little bit of a defensive action uh, uh, soon, maybe not right now, um, but, but, but soon when it comes to, to your business, not, maybe not, that doesn't mean, you know, invest less or anything, but, but that does mean to start saving a little bit more. So over the next, you know, two to three years ish, um, you know, you can be ready for that. Uh, but but currently right now, I do agree that the economy is strong. You, you know, you definitely need to take advantage of that. But at some point, you know, this 18 straight months, which is a near record, we do have to take note that we are in a record currently. Um, and at some point, you know, ca economies are, are cyclical. Um, what, what comes up must come down. Um, so it will come down eventually. And when that happens, just make sure that your business is ready to combat that. Um Next up, we're going to talk about the tariff situation, which I, I spoke about previously, um, and, and that is, uh, so, so two things. I actually want to switch these. The first thing is that U.S. and China announced the uh, newest round of tariffs this week. Uh, so the U.S. will impose 25% tariff on $16 billion worth of Chinese goods. That's going to happen later in August. And uh, China will respond with a 25% tariff on $16 billion worth of goods. So they're matching uh, uh, tariff percentage as well as uh, the amount as well. So, you know, if you're curious uh, for the U.S., um, they're filing up the round of tariffs for $34 billion and they're targeting 279 items, uh, which include tractors. For, uh, so U.S. Is, is imposing tariffs on China, on Chinese products. These Chinese products include tractors, plastic tubes, and measurement equipment equipment like speedo speedometers um, and some other things um, as well. I'm getting this from the Business in Insider if you're curious. And then China will respond and on 25 with 25% on 16 billion worth of U.S. goods coming into China. And the list of goods subject to tariffs include energy products like coal, um, as well as large items like cars. So things that, you know, I, I spoke about um, pretty much China's looking to hit Trump uh, a large Trump supporters. So if you're in those areas, um, you will be hit um, <laughs> with these new tariffs, with these new tariffs, and you will be hit again uh, because that's essentially all that that China is going to be targeting um, right now, um, as much as they can. Uh, we we are pretty much in a, the beginnings of a trade war, and that, that's kind of how this is going to go. So if you're in the urban areas, this may not hit you as much, but if you're in those rural and manufacturing areas, this is going to continue to hit you, and it's going to continue to hit you as long as the trade war um, continues. So it talks about, you know, kind of why um, both both countries are doing this. Obviously, America wants, uh, let's see what it says, America wants um, 
China to change uh, its economic behavior, um, obviously make it a little bit more fair for for American American companies to do business in China. Um, obviously, the the whole U.S. intellectual property by Chinese firms is, is really huge when you're looking to to do something um, in China and, and the theft surrounding that. And then China is essentially just talking about this is just unfair. I mean, it violates world World Trade Organization rules. So we'll see kind of how that goes. But obviously, both parties need to at some point negotiate and, and figure out a, a way to move forward. Um, now, with that being said, something that, that surprised me that came out this week, um, it's from Fox Business, but it's based on a recent study from UBS, and it shows that 71% of business owners approve of additional tariffs on China. Um, it, it, in fact, more, more businesses say that they, they're seeing a positive from the tariffs than they are from tax reform and regulatory relief, which is amazing. Um, it, it's, it's amazing because, I mean, just when you're talking, when you're seeing people running for office nowadays, People are pushing the whole, you know, decrease of regulation and tax reform. But amazingly, what it, what it seems that people may actually respond to when it comes to Republicans is is the tariffs that are that are hit. I think what people like, and I think this has less to do with the economy and more to do with just the fact that Trump is he's a fighter, whether whether you, you like him or not, whether whether you agree on the fights that he he picks, um, his supporters. Um, and business owners like the fact that he's fighting for for their rights to to do business on a global on a global scale. Um, as a small business owner myself, I do, I, you know, I'm not look. Whatever you think about Trump is is your opinion. I'm not going to talk about you know any social issues on this podcast or anything like that. Um, well, with with this particular episode, but what I will say is that I do I can appreciate a president who on a global stage is saying America is being treated unfairly. It's taking steps to ensure that American companies are being treated fairly. Um, now, the tariffs I don't agree with, um, but I can appreciate the sentiment. So I think that's pretty much where it's coming from here. And that's why people are saying that they approve of, of the additional tariffs because the initial tariffs did work. Um, how it worked is a little bit, um, some people are saying some things, some people are saying other things, but the initial tariffs did work and they helped to hit for the American economy to hit that 4.1% GDP growth. So it did. Uh, but uh, now, and it says it here on the Fox Business, there are concerns over the long-term impact of a trade war um, as, as this kind of continues. So although the initial impact was was a positive and, you know, love him or hate him, he was, Trump was right about the fact that this initial run of, of tariffs uh, actually worked. And if he can get, you know, these, these other global countries, these global nations to the trade t- table now, he is in a little bit of a uh, better position to negotiate. He is. Um, now, it, will this continue? No one knows. Um, again, well, not no one knows. Their experts are saying different things. We'll see. But, uh, you know, again, if you're a small business, um, still a small business owner, just note that this is kind of the things that, that people are saying, which is, you know, business owners, 71% of business owners uh, approve of additional tariffs on, on China. So that pretty much say that all that to say that I don't see the Trump administration stopping on tariffs and I don't see them heading to the negotiating table anytime soon. And again, this, this insider said the same thing as well as Fox Business or Fox Business, not, I'm sorry, Business in, Insider said that they don't see an end to tariffs yet. Um, and I agree with that. Um, and especially if 71% of business owners are approving of this and approve additional tariffs, then I really don't see this. So at some point, you know, this has to affect the economy. Don't know when, but at some point it has to, because uh, you can't just keep ramping up prices. Uh, that That's just not going to work. So, you know, take note of that for your own business um, as you move forward. Uh, now, I'll, Two more points here, but one of the things I want to talk about is the state of Illinois real quick. And again, we're not talking about social issues. We're not talking about, you know, crime rates or anything like that. Uh, Just focusing more so on business. And when you look at Illinois from a minority business enterprise perspective, there's a lot of good things to note that's happening in the state. So recently, uh, Illinois signed a memorandum of understanding to increase minority participation at the state level. Um, so uh, nothing but, oh, well, it is pretty big, but essentially what this means is that Illinois is, is stating that they're going to make a concerted effort to do business with minority business, inter- minority businesses in the state of Illinois. 
which is pretty big. Um, you know, there is a, what the oh excuse me what the long term uh benefit is and kind of what this means specifically, um it's still unclear. However, this is the first step um to expanding opportunities for minority businesses. Um, and to coincide with that, uh, we're also seeing, obviously, with the Obama Foundation, um, looking to build the Obama Library in in uh, in Illinois. Uh, Obama Foundation has hired a diversity consultant, um, and essentially just to connect with the minority businesses in in Illinois to make sure that they get the the businesses and the suppliers that they need to build to build that that library. So, so there's a lot of, it seems as there's, as if there's a lot of opportunities coming out of the state of Illinois. Um, so if you are an Illinois minority business, um, definitely take a hard look at some of the opportunities and how it could, you know, potentially, uh, benefit, benefit you. But again, there are a lot of opportunities out there for Illinois that that's coming up, it seems in the next couple of, in the next year or two. Um, the last point that I wanted to talk about is, uh, and this kind of came up last week, but I just took note of it this week, so I decided to talk about it here because it and this is gonna this affects small business small and diverse businesses every day. I mean, and that's when it comes to healthcare and offering healthcare to your employees. So one of the things that came out late last week, I believe, is um Bernie Sanders made a comment that the Koch one of the Koch brothers studies prove that Medicare for all would save the nation $12 trillion over the next 10 years. Now, from the surface, that seems as if it's it's really good. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm at politi PolitiFact for this. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go all the way down to the very bottom um, where it talks about uh, the ruling, right? Um, so basically, this is half true, right? And I'm going to... This statement's half true, right? Which is, it is true that a study that was um, funded by the Koch brothers did reveal that two trillion dollars um or that over a 10 10 year period if america decided to do medicare for all it has the potential to save the american people uh two trillion dollars over a 10 10 year period however what uh bernie sanders failed to mention is that there was also an alternative figure. So basically what the report did is it gave the best case scenario and the worst case scenario, right? So best case scenario, as far as Bernie Sanders would be concerned, is it, if we did Medicare for, for all, it would save American people $2 trillion over a 10 year period. The worst case scenario is that um, if the plan isn't as successful in controlling costs, uh, it could lead to an increase of almost $3.3 .3 trillion in national healthcare expenditures. Um, so we could either save two trillion, or we could either be spending three point three trillion dollars more. Um, so again, it gave a range of kind of where it could and couldn't go. Um, and and even when it talks about the best case scenario, when it talks about the two trillion over a ten year period, it said in most cases it won't be that uh, because there are a ton of assumptions um, that they were making in that area, and they were being extremely generous. Um, in those assumptions to get to that two trillion trillion dollar number, so it is true that um, the Koch brothers great, uh, did fund a report that said that Medicare for all would save the American people two trillion over a ten year period, but that was because it was part of a range, um, and that report also said that it could increase the cost uh, of of healthcare expenditures to three point three trillion. So if you're a small business and uh, as as I am. And I actually got excited about this. So oh, two trillion, you know, saving over a ten-year period. This is this is excellent. Let's figure out ways to kind of move forward to this. So you know, it could save my business money um, over over that time frame. But unfortunately, uh, this this is misleading. And it turns out that it was just a range. Um, and this isn't this you know the 100% solution that that you know liberals were kind of making it out to be. This is um, just again, it's just an option and, and just a range. So the the debate continues on if medicare for all is really the solution um but with that being said um you know i pretty much covered everything when it comes to this i appreciate everyone for sticking around and listening to what i had to say uh, if you have any comments or, or any suggestions definitely let me know please like share or leave a comment and tell me what you think that being said thank you and have a great day